Now I know you have all heard about the 10 skaters that you will meet. And the part 2, part 3, part 4, honestly, I have lost track of how many skaters you will meet videos I've made by now. But have you heard of the 10 skaters you will rarely meet? Mmm. How's that for original content? So I guess welcome to today's post video where I tell you about the 10 skaters that you will rarely meet or probably never meet. So without taking up any more time, let's get right into it. Up first is the poser. Now look, I know this is in every other YouTuber's 10 skaters you will meet videos, and this is also in one of my 10 skaters you will meet videos, but the fact of the matter is, it's actually pretty rare to see a poser. The reason behind that is that the poser simply doesn't really skate, you know? So if they don't skate, how are you supposed to come across them? Man, fuck this! Right? Well, I will say, while it's not impossible, it's very unlikely that you will. But typically, if you do see them, they'll be near the zoomies at the mall. Or if by a strike of misfortune you happen to see one at the skate park, they will instantly stand out to you just based on what they're wearing. They'll have all this flashy and extra clothes and their deck's gonna look super fresh, you know, brand new deck, but it's gonna look super flashy, just, you know, bring as much attention to their deck and just themselves as possible. And even more so by the classic way that they hold their board. But one thing that you will never see them doing is actually skating. Be it either because they can't skate at all and they've never stood on a skateboard, or because they don't want to give up the facade of them not being able to skate as well as they say they can. In fact, you'll pretty much see them doing everything except for skateboarding. Smoking cigarettes, bragging about how they let Tony Hawk sleep with their girlfriend, or posting on Snapchat about how they're at the skate park. Just typical poser behavior. Number two, the gatekeeper. While a lot of skaters fear getting called a poser or getting made fun of for being new when they first start going to the skate park, it's actually extremely unlikely that you'll ever actually meet somebody that gatekeeps skateboarding that hard. While posers are a different story, they still usually just get the pass, like people just usually ignore them. But most of all, there's nothing wrong with being new. And skaters can tell if you're new or if you're trying to act like you could actually skate and be a poser. Yeah, I could skate that. And most skaters will be happy to help you and don't care about your skill level. In fact, most skaters won't even realize that you're there because they're going to be too focused on their own tricks. Although assholes do exist everywhere, so it might happen to you someday, it's very rare to come across them in skateboarding unless you happen to go to a skate park where they're a local. Number three, the magnet. The magnet, better known as the human magnet, is quite a rare skater. It isn't all that often that you actually see one, but when you do, they're pretty easy to identify. Most commonly, they'll take someone else's board straight to the face. But the human magnet can attract many other metal things, such as cars, scooters, or even motorcycles. And this is the most dangerous one because they could be a friend of yours and you could never know about it until it's too late. But here's the deal, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I don't care if the human magnet saved your firstborn child from Bill Cosby. Stay away from them. I'm not talking about social distancing six feet. I mean, wherever the human magnet is, be on the opposite side of the skate park from him. Because you will be collateral damage. And guess what? How long is a skateboard? Well, it's more than the face length. In fact, it's more like four. four. So his magnetic pull can knock out not one, not two, but three of his homies if they're sitting close enough. And unfortunately, there's nothing that you can do to save this kind of skater. Once they get their magnetic curse, it's pretty much over for them. Not even the Aaron Cairo Scientology pitch can save them. My name's Aaron Cairo. I'm a sponsored Scientologist from the San Francisco Bay Area. Number four, the fossil. Now you're probably wondering why the fossil is such a rare scare to come across. Or maybe you're not, because I mean, when was the last time you saw a fossil of a skater? But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the dudes that are like, not 30, not 40, not 50, not even six, like people that are over 70 or 65 that skate. I mean, after all, there's hundreds of videos on YouTube and Instagram of dudes who are like 80 skateboarding, but in reality, these guys are incredibly hard to see in person. I mean, think about it. When was the last time that you even saw somebody over 50 years old at a skate park? I cannot name the last time that I have. So you're probably wondering, why? 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 Why are they so rare? Are they one of the seven wonders of the world? Well, yes, they are. They are just so rare because they just croak all the time. I mean, let's face it, if you're an 80-year-old skateboarder, you're one scooter kid away from being absolutely demolished. And just like that, another 80-year-old skater is gone. But his memory will forever be preserved 
on, of all things, Instagram. And maybe it's Facebook. And then I'll get added to the list of hundreds of old men skateboarding videos to make it seem like there's a lot of old dudes out there skating. But if you do, by some miracle, happen to meet one of these extremely old skaters in person, show them some respect. Because unlike most old people that decide to sit in a retirement home and feed ducks as their main hobby, these old people skaters decide to say, fuck that, I'm not going out that way, I'm gonna shred till I die. And all that I have is pure respect for that. Number six, Aaron Cairo! Yes! The skate god, Aaron Cairo. Aaron, are you Jewish? I am actually an Scientologist. So basically, that would make me Jewish, right? Now, rumor has it, if you don't live in California, it's very unlikely to run across him. But there have been numerous sightings outside of the state. So even if you're all the way in New York, it's important to keep an eye out for the Scientologist. Or rather, an ear. Because the easiest way to spot a wild air in Cairo is by their very distinct mating call. Probably when I came out of the womb and I did a method air out of the womb and I was like, Whoa! This isn't the only sound that the Cairo makes, though. Another common one is the IQ dropping, deafening scream of FIRST TRY! So you're probably wondering, well yeah, it's pretty rare to see one, but why should I watch out for him? He's a harmless shrimp who paid for all his Scientology DLCs, right? WRONG! He's a skate god that you should never piss off. Legend has it that he can slam his board down with the force of the magnitude of five earthquakes. Now not only that, but it's the easiest way to get the curse of the magnet. All it takes is one snarky look from the skate god himself. And yeah, if you run into the wild Aaron Cairo, try to avoid pissing yourself. What even is this video right now? <laughs> Number seven, the skateboarding animal. When was the last time you saw an animal on a skateboard? Probably never, enough said. But you know I can't end it there, you know, or else this video won't be long enough and I won't get my sweet monies. So let me banter for a little bit, okay? See, if you think about it, without really thinking about it... <laughs> skateboarding animals are the most advanced life on Earth behind humans. It doesn't matter if it's a monkey skateboarding, or a dog, or even a cat sitting on a Roomba. Why are they so advanced, you're probably asking? What makes them so great? Well, they've adopted the wheel, the man's greatest invention, into a form of transportation. They technically could be the fastest animals on Earth if they bomb a hill that's big enough. So, yeah, just some food for thought. Number eight, the furry skaters. In all aspects except physical, I am a wolf. God. Now you may think that furry skaters are the same point we just talked about. I'm talking about the full-blown furry costume wearing skaters that rarely come out unless it's like Halloween night or something. Although it's very unlikely you'll actually meet one, let alone see one in person, it's important to know that you're most likely to encounter one at night when the moon is full. But because they're neon and bright colors, they'll stick out like a sore thumb at the skate park. So what is the danger with furries, you might ask? Well, it's simple. Furries are an invasive species that spread like wildfire. Their mating is like bunnies, like they multiply. Yeah, they, they just multiply. One day you'll just see one and you'll think, uh, hey, that, that's kind of weird. And, and you'll just go back to doing your thing. But next week you go back to the same skate park and there's more than you can count. They spread quicker than scooter kids. Once one of them invades the spot, the whole pack is coming over too. It's pretty much over unless you can take action early. It's hunting season, right? Now I'm just joking, but uh, get back on track, for real. What I'm gonna share with you is uh, classified information from the CIA. The only way to deal with a furry on a skateboard is to target the weak spot. What is that? Well, it's the tail. Now, I'm not too sure how those tails attach to them, you know? I, I, got, I got a few ideas, but uh, they're not fit for YouTube. But regardless, the weak spot is the tail. So next time you see one skating around, give them a nod, and when they pass you, throw your hand out and yank that tail like you're trying to stir a lawnmower. Now, but by all means, sorry Susan, sorry uh, YouTube uh, community guidelines. I'm not endorsing harassment, this is satire, please. Number eight, two girls, one skateboard. You may think, oh yeah, I've seen that video before. N no, no, I'm not talking about that. 
In fact, I don't even know what you're talking about, bro. Uh, put, put the link down down below. Just DM it to me on Instagram, all right? Yep. Uh, I need it for research. What I'm talking about myself here is a little bit different. First thing I should mention is that two girls, one skateboard does not discriminate. It can be two guys, one skateboard, three guys, one girl skateboard. They're all the same. Now with that out of the way, these skaters are one of the most rare ones to come across because they typically aren't ever found at a skate park. But that doesn't mean that there isn't any danger here. The danger isn't what they can do to you. It is what they can turn you into. You don't believe me? Well, here's a story of what happened to one of my best friends, Danny. See, Danny was on TikTok about a year ago, and an unnamed skater girl was just chilling at the top of the hill. And she brings up that it might be a good idea for the two of them to bomb the hill together. Now, most common sense would say, no, that's a horrible idea. Why would I ever do that? I'm gonna die. But you know what happened to my friend Danny? He didn't say no. Yeah. Pretty sombering, powerful stuff. So the message here is to steer clear, because before you know it, you could be on the front page of everyone who follows the Hall of Me. Number nine, the Transformer. Much like Aaron Cairo, there's only one of these that really exists, so the odds of you running into him is very slim to none. But the Transformer is a shape-shifting interdimensional alien that takes the form of a skateboard. Yes, it's not exactly a person, it's the skateboard itself. Um, yeah, it's about after that. Number 10, the Garbage Man. Enough said. Anyway guys, Thank you for watching this absolute craziness that this video was. Um, I, I think making videos five times a week is starting to get to my brain. I'm starting to, to, to lose parts of my brain. I, I can't think straight. I'm talking in weird ways. Keep in mind, YouTube, please don't demonetize my video. Don't give me another strike. This video is satire. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. So yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. That's all we got for today, kids.